Hey, Alan, come and see this enhancement I got while you were gone. Oh my, that's really big. That should help you go a lot longer. <laughs> in this video, we're going to be talking about this auxiliary fuel tank and toolbox and how I install it in my 3500 for additional range as well as storage for my tools. Stick around. Hi, welcome to OK Let's Go RV. My name is Scott. My wife Ellen is usually with me, but because this is a tech video, she's taking the night off. In this video, I'm going to talk about this 40-gallon auxiliary fuel tank that I'm installing into my 2022 Ram 3500 Dually with a Cummings 67. So when I first ordered my truck back in 2022, I made the newbie mistake of ordering it with the smaller tank because I was concerned about the weight of the additional fuel. What I quickly found out on our way down from New England to Florida this past winter, with all the range anxiety, I should have gone with the larger tank instead. When I finally got down here, I talked to a few dealers about switching out the 31-gallon tank for the 51-gallon tank, and none of them could guarantee me that they could even order the right tank to swap out. And if they ordered the wrong tank for me, that I would be responsible for its cost and wouldn't be able to return it or get credit towards the right tank. So. Instead of doing all that, I went out and looked for an auxiliary tank that I could put in the back of the bed and also a toolbox with secure storage for my tools. So in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of review of the tank that I got. I'm going to show you the installation procedure and then we'll see how it all goes. So if you get value from this video, please like it. If you get value from this kind of information, please subscribe. And if you think anybody else will get value from this video, please share it out to them so they get the benefit of it as well. Thanks a lot. Here we go. Okay, here's a quick overview of the RDS 40 gallon auxiliary fuel tank with 10 inch toolbox. Uh, I'm no expert, but it seems to be pretty well constructed. We have some solid welds all the way around with consistent beads. It's got steel latches, one of which has a key lock. What's really cool is that you can use one latch to pop it open. We have pneumatic struts here both sides. Those pop it open pretty quickly and hold it up there pretty firmly for you. They're attached to some reinforcement steel rather than the aluminum directly, so that's good. The edges here are all open hemmed, so they're not sharp. Over here, we have a clickable fuel cap. We have a fuel gauge, and then we have a vent. The vent is pointing right up against the sidewall, so I don't know if the expectation is that you actually need to connect a hose to that. I'm going to confirm that with them. It does have a safety feature, so the filler tube goes down just below the top of the tank, so that prevents you from overfilling it. And the only downside of that is that it um, diminishes the capacity of the tank to 95% of the rated capacity. The material it's made out of is aluminum alloy. It's 3.18 millimeters thick, or 125 thousandths, for you guys in the know. The tank has baffles in it, which stop the fuel from sloshing around. It is a DOT rated tank as well. Down here we have where you would put the valve fixture to feed into the gravity uh, feed down below on your tank. And then we have these tabs here three of them that you would drill through to mount into your bed. They give you the hardware to do that and they also give you some neoprene that you would put between the bottom of the tank and the bed of the truck to give some isolation there. I picked it up at the factory, RDS in Perry, Florida because I was nearby and that was convenient. I coordinated the deal through tank and barrel which made it very affordable and convenient. I'll put the links to both RDS and Tank and Barrel down below so if you're interested in getting something for yourself. They do offer a variety of configurations, tank sizes, uh, combos, just the tank, etc. So check them out. Now I'm going to go and get this installed. I'll take some video and show you how I get that done. As part of the installation of the auxiliary tank we have to cut into the filler tube to put an adapter which is right here. 
All right, so that'll go in here somewhere. The idea is to mount it as horizontal as possible. I'm laying on the ground now looking up just to give you the orientation. So this is the bottom of the bed right here. All right, so what we got is the main filler tube, an overflow tube, and then right here, oh, right here, that you can see is the vent tube. If we were to put it where it would be most horizontal, it would likely be right around here. And, but the other way, that would require two cuts there. Over here, we can also get it horizontal. Let me reorient. There's a lot of room under here, so I can actually sit up. Let me see if I can get everything in view. Okay, so here is the filler tube again. And here is the vent or breather line. And this is the overflow. At first I thought, yeah, we'll cut, make two cuts here and install it there. The other challenge there was on the valve that I'm putting in, this brass piece would hit here no matter where I put it on this length. So I said, nope, not gonna do that, plus two cuts. Hmm. Okay, so next option was over here, which is gonna be pretty easy to do. This'll slip right off, and on the main filler tube, I'll cut back a couple of inches well before the, um, the bonding attachment here, and that will give me enough clearance. And the other nice thing about that is I'll disconnect the rubber first, and then I'll cut the fill tube and any metal shavings won't go into the tank. I'll be able to clean them off before I reattach everything. So that's a little bonus of doing it that way. Let me go and get that started and we'll see how it goes. All right, so I'll start by removing the hose. I'll pull forward instead. And then that should just pull off of there. Probably hit the camera doing this. I can feel it coming. Gotta wiggle a little bit. That is disconnected. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a rubber glove over that so nothing gets um, into it. All right, so what I did, hopefully you can see that, that's disconnected. I haven't cut anything yet. I haven't put the rubber glove on there yet. So basically what I'm doing is I'm removing up to here, I marked it. From here to the end of this metal pipe is the exact length of the adapter. And then there's, I'll put a rubber coupling on this side and I'll use the existing rubber coupling from that side. And I do have enough clearance on that tab that I mentioned. Um, I've got about two inches between it and where the cut will be right there and that'll give me enough room for the rubber coupler. The other thing I did was this vent line here was tie wrapped to the filler tube. So what I did is I disconnected it, uh, cut that tie wrap and I tie wrapped it up here temporarily just to get it out of the way so I can see it. So when I'm cutting, I know if I'm gonna hit it or not. I don't, I might be able to move it out of the way a little bit more, but I'm not too concerned with it. I've got good visibility under here. So as as I pay attention, I should be all set. Okay, so that took me about 30 minutes or so. Could have gone a little bit quicker, but I had to run back and forth to get the tools out of the rig. Had to use the power sawzall to get it done. But there, you should be able to see it. I don't have the tank hooked up yet, but um, the cut is done. It's all reattached. It was fairly easy. Once I cut through it, uh, there's plenty of room to work in here. Um, I'm actually sitting upright underneath here, so. It's uh, pretty easy to work on. You can get your hands in there to get the, you know, the screw clamps on and all that kind of stuff. You can see some of the metal filings there from cutting. I did put a rubber glove on the rubber side once I disconnected it before I started cutting. And then I did make sure that I cleared out whatever metal flakes were in this tube. And although you didn't see me on camera, one very important thing to do is wear safety glasses when you're doing this. You certainly don't want to get one of those metal particles in your eye. Um, or in your mouth for that matter too, so keep your mouth shut when you're doing it. Okay, so I've got the tank dry fit into the bed. Now here's a nice feature, just to point out a little aside here, is I have this Dodge with the 30K fifth wheel hitch, and I have the puck system, 
and that made it very easy to within like three minutes really to just disconnect it and move it back it's really heavy so you got that to contend with but um, made it very convenient to move it out of the way so I got enough room back here to work so I dry fit it I've got it equidistant from both sides and then I also made sure that I got enough clearance here so when I open the cover it doesn't hit anything as you can see it's right below the tonneau cover fixture so it's not going to interfere with anything so what I did is I used duct tape on the bed and then I put kind of registration marks on the tank as well as on the duct tape did it here so when I pull the tank out to drill the holes in the bed I'll be able to um, know where to put it back also over here you can see down there oh let's see I'll bring it in this way maybe I've got some duct tape right underneath where those mounts are and what I'll do is I'll just put a sharpie through the hole on the bracket and that'll make a mark on the duct tape and then I'll know where to drill the hole I've made sure down below that I've got no obstructions or anything that I'm going to hit. You can see that other piece of duct tape where the valve will be to turn on and off the fuel, which will be a little tight to get to, but it'll be there. I made sure that that's got clearance down below as well. The back of the bed is right here. So the fuel penetration is gonna come out about eight inches from the back of the bed. So that comes out to about here. It'll be right here. So I'm missing this rib and missing this uh, upright support here so it'll be right about there and then as far as the side mounts those are going to come out a little bit further somewhere in this area here there'll be one on this side and one on the passenger side and then for the one that's in the front of the tank towards the back of the bed is going to be up in here and you can see hopefully you can see there's plenty of clearance up there so i'm going to go make those penetrations and see how it goes all right now that i got the pilot holes done i will do it with five sixteenths okay here we go oh wrong way and I'm sure there's nothing below there, so even if I pop through, no chance of me hitting anything. All right, last hole here for the mounting tabs. Again, 5 sixteenths. There you go. All right, so last thing I gotta do is gotta pull the tank forward again and use the step bit to put the penetration for the fuel line. So I'll do that in a couple seconds. All right, I'm gonna open the hole to 13 sixteenths instead of three quarters because I've got a grommet that needs to fit in there. There it is. Okay, there's the grommet. And I got a piece of test hose that'll fit perfectly. There you go. All right, now I'll put the neoprene down. I've got it all measured out. These are 18 inch strips. I've cleaned off the bed bit so that I get good adhesion. I'm gonna put six of them down. That gave me enough material for six. I'm gonna do um, every other item here. And then I think I'll have to do two in the center because that's just the number I have. All right, now we'll do the final placement of the tank and uh, bolt it down. All right, so I have finished the installation. Here it is. Um, I left this in place so you people that know better can laugh at me and those that may not know better may think I'm a genius but because I didn't have any extra hands to help me and I had to put the bolt on at the bottom I didn't have a way to hold this bolt tight up here so I put the ratchet on it and duct taped it there I'm all set with that now I just left it there to be funny and one thing that I probably would have done differently um, is turning out okay but 
I would have probably put that fuel line a little bit more straighter out th rather than going right down right there because it is still pitched um, below the bed to the um, adapter but it could be a little bit more so if you're going to do this I would recommend just putting that a little bit higher up on the wall a little more straight out from the valve if you know what I mean. All right, so now we're gonna test for leaks and functionality. So we know that this tank now is at a quarter. We'll check the main tank. I think it's about, about three quarters, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. It's just about a needle width or so below three quarters of the tank. What I've done is I cut up the box that the tank came in and I put it under here. And now what I'll do is I'll open up the auxiliary tank and if there are any leaks, we should see it on this cardboard. And if things are working successfully, we should see this gauge go down and the gauge in the truck go up and I'll take a look and see how long it actually takes to top off the tank using the gravity feed. While we're waiting for the fuel to transfer I'll show you the finished product here. Here's a sample of one of those bolts coming through. The spring is not fully compressed it's just enough so it gives some flex and here's where we're coming through you can see the grommet there. Like I was saying, I would have probably been better off to put this a little bit higher. That way I would get a good pitch. This is pitched good. It's, a, you know, this side is higher than where it goes into the tank over there. I don't know if you'll see that. I'll get up there in a minute. And I just have this duct taped here right now. I'm gonna get some surface mount uh, fasteners so I can permanently attach that. And let me get up here and make sure you can see the finished here there it is hopefully that's in focus and earlier when i was uh, talking about where the bolts were going to go here's the one for this side and the one for the other side is way over there and then the one for the forward part of the tank which is towards the back of the bed is actually i don't know if you can see it it's right in there it is a little bit obscured by, I think, either a fuel filter or the fuel pump. I'm not quite sure what that is. And, um, but I still didn't hit that. I went through there slow. And that was a little bit uh, tough to get the bolt on, but I went up near the drive shaft in the exhaust, and that was easy enough to get to once I figured that out. And I used my little uh, ratchet trick that I showed you up above. I did that on the other two bolts as well. All right, so... Under here so far, I don't see any leaks. Everything looks pretty good. I'll go and check the fuel gauges, see if uh, anything's actually going into the tank. It's been about an hour since I turned on the valve. And as we can see, the auxiliary tank is empty. There's no signs of any leaks at that valve. No leaks down here on the cardboard. And I also looked up at the adapter and there are no leaks there and there are no leaks on the main filler where I made the cuts. So let's look at the truck tank and see what that's at. Earlier I reported that it was at three quarters. It was actually at seven eighths of a tank when we started. And now it is reading full. So there you go. Another thing that was pretty cool is when I was underneath earlier, I put my ear up against the tank and I could hear the fuel trickling in. So I knew it was working. And now the tank's been full, reading full at least, for a little bit. And there's no signs of any overflow up here. So I think we have a success. I'll be back in a little bit, give a uh, total recap and some additional little findings I want to share with you. 
All right, so it's been a couple of days since the tank has been installed. This is the first chance I got to sit down and do this section of the video. So a couple of points I wanted to cover. First, I shopped around for the tank. I went to Northern Tool online, and the problem with them was that they could only arrange to have it shipped directly to me, and I didn't know where I was gonna be with the RV by the time they shipped it to me, so I had to rule them out. They couldn't arrange for the will call at the manufacturer either. So if I did have it shipped to me, it would have been a few hundred dollars more so I ruled them out also on Amazon it's listed there but the price is quite a bit higher because they offer free shipping the price was fluctuating a little bit so you may want to check it for your particular set of circumstances because if you need to have it shipped they may be the better deal so you worth taking a look anyhow as I mentioned I bought it from tank and barrel pretty much because that worked for the best price and the best logistics they were very readily available to answer all my questions and to make the arrangements for the will call like no questions asked it was just zero friction transaction so customer service was good so that's why i went with them the one thing i didn't mention was the installation kit so the installation kit is also from rds who's a tank manufacturer when you order your tank you want to order the installation kit that is specific to your vehicle and what it comes with is the t adapter which had the brass fitting that's where the fuel goes into your tank from and then they give you some rubber hose in case you have to cut into the metal filler pipe and put rubber hose on either side I only had to do that on one side they give you all the hose clamps for that as well as the uh, three-quarter inch fuel line I think it's three-quarter inch and the hose clamps for that and they also give you the valve that you need to install onto the tank in that valve you need to put some pipe dope or some pipe tape around that and they don't supply that I went to O'Reilly and got some Teflon tape that is rated for diesel and gas application so that worked out well so the total cost for me was about a thousand ninety dollars the tank I believe retails for a thousand forty five I've seen recently and then the installation kit was about 90 bucks so I got some kind of little discount in there somewhere along the line so the installation as you saw in the video is pretty straightforward as long as you gather up all your tools and get yourself organized it shouldn't take you much longer than four or five hours I spread the work over a couple of days because of the weather and, and that kind of stuff so you know I, if I can do it anybody can do it and it probably took me a little bit longer because I'm very meticulous I measured a couple of times I was you know cutting into the bed and stuff you just want to make sure that I had everything measured out properly uh, overall, my opinion of Tank and Barrel and RDS is good. Their customer service is outstanding. They accommodate, make it, like I said, a frictionless deal, so perfect. And if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, you can feel free to put them below. If you think that I could have done something differently to make it a better installation, let me know below. If you have any specific questions of why I did something a certain way, let me know below. And there are a bunch of links down there for Amazon. Those links are affiliate links. I do get a little bit of commission if you buy anything off of those links. It doesn't cost you any more. It does help us out a little bit, so I appreciate it if you do that. Of course, if you like the video, like it. If you think other people will get value from it, share it out, and of course, subscribe. And finally, if there are other topics you'd like me to make videos on, let me know in the comments below, and if it's in my wheelhouse, I'd be happy Happy to take a look and consider doing the video so again thanks a lot for watching I appreciate it everyone I hope to see you in the next one take care bye